Hey everyone, and welcome back to Steel Streams. This is Jothan. And I'm Gracie. And we're here today with Torchlight 2, episode... 3. 3, episode 3. three. Yes. And uh, we're right where we left off last episode, at Skull Hollow, about to do the quest, Bring Out Your Dead. And uh, we're apparently going to go bring some dead people out. Yeah, we're going to rouse the Assyrian spirits and enter the bone gallery in the temple steps. Retrieve the Rosa Mortis. Yes, and I'm sure that sounds a lot more flowery than it really wind up being. And it's mostly going to consist of shooting zombies in the face with uh, magic and pistols and all that goodness. While uh, our ferret and stag friends, of course, give us some aid. And of course, here's what appears to be zombies. Which are always fantastic. And ghosts. Got all the zombies and ghosts. Feels like an episode of Scooby Doo, which I believe we've covered plenty of last episode. Yeah. So there probably won't be any Scooby Doo discussion conversations going on in this episode. However, you never know. There's always time for Scooby Doo. There is always time for Scooby-Doo. I have to love that every time I seem to open a box, there's usually like skeletons pouring out of it. It's like the little clown car skeletons. Yeah, pretty much. I'm sure there's not more of them in there. Like you open one sarcophagi and sar sarcophagus? Sar sar sarcophagi? What's, what's the plural of sarcophagus? I guess sarcophagi. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Bless you. I thought there's, there's even like zombies hiding in urns, which makes very little sense, but ask me no more questions and tell me no more lies. We seem to have gone in opposite directions. Yeah, I, I just noticed some. I'm sure it probably loops around. Though I don't know. Sometimes this game isn't that nice. No, nah, there's, there's a fair amount of backtracking involved usually. Ouch, that guy hurts very much. Don't care for fire shooting skeletons. It's, it's even worse than normal skeletons. Skeletons are usually bad enough. Of course, you know, ghost defying the laws of physics, slipping through walls and all that goodness. Doing what ghosts do. They do best. <laughs> I do wonder what it's like to be a ghost, though. Like, if you, you can just be incorporeal at your leisure and pass through walls, but then still apparently hit and kill people. You, th you think it would kind of work one way or the other, honestly. Either you can physically touch things or you can't. Yeah, they seem to kind of like make it up as they go. Hey, I think it's bad enough these skeletons will just play dead and conveniently uh, show up. We're going to skip that for now or backtrack here and check out some of these other paths we missed. There's always a quest for epic loots. There seems to be some kind of awesome chest down here. Why is that? Goodness. Oh, that's that's not good. These guys are glowing a fair bit, but they seem to be regular mobs for the most part. They've just got armor. They're skeletons with armor. I was, I was kind of concerned. I turned around a corner and saw several glowing mobs rushing at me. I thought they were all uh, champion mobs. But it was not the case. That guy is. He does not look friendly. Shooting in the other direction. That's not gonna work. Silly me. 
summoning ghost bats. Which is just, just terribly inconvenient. But he's gone, so that's, that's nice. He has a little bat hanging out. Yeah, there we go. I was gonna say, was that gonna be a glitch? Of just that bat hanging out? I can't, I haven't really run into too many glitches or bugs in this game so far. This map is ridiculously huge, but uh, I haven't had too much technical trouble with this game actually. It runs really well. ridiculously large level. This is all just a side path, we didn't even have to go this way. So we're getting that chance to go up. It was extremely slow. Yeah. Without them complaining. Well I think he also kept getting confused as to who he was attacking. Um, because I noticed he kept changing directions. Yeah. Started out towards me, then you, then me, then you, and it's like once he started to settle on one, it's too late. Yay for m multiplayer co-ops and confusing the AIs. <laughs> oh. It's kind of a lackluster pathway there. No epic loot, just a bit of gold and besides more ghosts and disgusting slug things. A little bit more gold. So I feel like a total uber noob because I just realized I instead of clicking everywhere I could just hold down my left mouse button to move. Yeah. <laughs> That is, that is the case. You can't. I I didn't I didn't realize that I was clicking. Or You're also coming from not having used a mouse before the. Yeah, that's true. I first time we played this game, I actually didn't have a mouse. I didn't actually bother getting myself a mouse until. Oh, we started this channel. <laughs> so I, I'm not. I wouldn't say that I'm not used to a mouse. I just clicked everywhere. Yep, I used my touchpad, which um, is why I'm also a bit of a noob to Heroes of the Storm, because I was pretty much told that that game was impossible without a mouse, um, so I didn't even bother with the touchpad for the longest time with that game. Could you imagine playing it with a mouse? Or without a mouse? Yeah, I'm sorry, with, yeah, without a mouse? I could. Um, the problem was is that even on my trackpad, I didn't really have the right click down um right click was kind of hard to do um and different games it seemed like had different mechanics of the right click uh some would be you know you put both of your fingers down and tap it twice and in some games that worked and then in other games that didn't work then i have to do a shift click and and it just i just i don't know i never really bothered I was trying to trying to play games fast paced and competitive as Heroes of the Storm. I can't imagine playing without a mouse. I mean, that trackpad is just not very good for ducking in and out of out of combat. Yeah. I mean, a game like this, it's a little bit more leisurely. You could probably get away with it, but. Well, I did get away with it. We practically played the entire game. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I wonder how far we got into this. I think we, we were at Act 3. I really don't even know how many acts there are in the game. Yeah, we, um... I remember... I... I actually canceled my 
World of Warcraft membership has been playing this game so much that I don't really see the point in paying the $15 a month subscription. Oh, jeez! I didn't mean to do that. Oh, there you are. I think... I was gonna say, I believe this is a trap. It's a trap! And there's the big guy. And he loves his stuffy, is uh, his description there. I'm not sure what that exactly is referring to. It sounds vulgar. Maybe a, a stuffed animal, I would hope? I am running low on mana. My mana is low. And I've been using my potions, but you're kind of having to use it faster than it can regenerate. But thankfully, he doesn't move very quickly either. At least not as quickly as we do. Definitely pretty easy to kite the fella. And down he goes. We still have these skeletons coming out of this pit. When are they going to stop? Oh, by the way, guys, if you do hear any popping noises, uh, most likely those are fireworks going off in the background. Um, it is kind of the evening before 4th of July when we're recording this, so you will hear little noises every now and again. Just FYI. Pop through this. What have we here? Talk to this fellow. Bring out your dead. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. That's probably one of my favorite movies ever. Nobody will be. Man, so... Something you guys might not know about me, if I haven't mentioned it before. Your I am a resident advisor at a college. And, um, don't worry. I'm, I'm a cool one. But <laughs> Your we do movie fun. nights where each of the RAs uh, pick a movie that we play in the theater um, of our college. And the very first movie I picked was Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And I was thinking that it was going to get a huge turnout because it's a cult classic. Who doesn't love Monty Python? One person showed up. And I feel like... If you are someone who is excited about the college experience, I feel like that sums up the college experience pretty accurately. Anything remotely good and fun, nobody would be interested. That's a shame. They they wouldn't know a good film if it bit them on the rear end. Which is funny because about a third of our school are film majors, so. But yet they don't know what good movies are. Your pet is back from town. I was able to send off Ginger with some of the uh, inventory that I had. Um, brought me back some gold. At some point I will buy some pretty nice stuff. Seems like most of the stuff that we pick up is vendor trash anyways. These guys are interesting. I don't have enough money. And another champion down. So to fill up a, a little bit of um, the 
the time here. I have to tell you guys about this movie we went and saw today. Without giving away spoilers, obviously. But, uh, Joa and I went out and saw Finding Dory today. Now, probably by the time this is uploaded, it might not be in the theaters anymore, but holy cow. So the theater was packed with children. Children of all ages, including us. Um, yes, I include us in that, that children description. But I feel like the children do not appreciate how much of a feels trip that Finding Dory was, because it was. It was very much a feels trip that I did not get a permission slip signed by my parents that said I could do. I cried like a baby. Um, but I'm sure we're, we'll have a more comprehensive review coming up soon. Um, but just know that it was an excellent movie, and if you're even you know what? No, I'm not even going to say if you were a fan. If you've seen the first one, it's worth it to go see it. I could see where it, it does definitely is not the kind of movie that makes sense if you haven't seen Finding Nemo. But I remember, I can't, I think that movie came out 13 years ago. I might be wrong, which means I was about seven years old when that movie came out. Um... So it, it's super nostalgic to try to go back and see it. Um, but then to just like remember the story still so well, um, I think it really says a lot about the impact that that movie in particular had on people. And it's, I would say that it's it's got a good commentary on at least. Um, maybe pollution a little bit, uh, and it's, it's a very subtle commentary. It's not like it's screaming in your face. It's, it's not quite wall -E level. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not. Where that's the point of the entire movie. <laughs> it's much more subtle, and it was just some, a really well done movie, and just gave credit to the original, while also being able to be a little bit of its own thing. I'm out of mana. These bad boys have shields. I'm curious, I need to go on my stats and make sure that I've got um, all my right stats up. But it seems like my attacks are taking a lot of mana, and maybe because I've changed the attack, I'm not using that basic fire attack that um, it, I kind of was being thrust into. I kind of opted for more of the electricity panel. I know I was kind of. Ooh! Secret room! Yeah. You've come across all kinds of secrets. So much gold! I just say, I absolutely love the soundtrack for this game too. It's very uh, kind of grungy. Uh, lots of like string supplement in it. Pretty classic dungeon crawling music. Views of Torchlight because I kind of got asked the question of whether or not uh, the videos on our channel were PG. Um, and so far, yes, all of them definitely are. This one was the one that we were a little bit skeptical of. But um, just because of the gore and the exploding enemies. Uh, and Joa, in our searchings, Joa found a great review Your of this game. What was kind of, like, what was the basic gif of that? Uh... I, I am honestly having trouble recalling. It was something about how 
yeah, it's a ripoff of Diablo, but it's a good ripoff of Diablo. Oh, yes, it's... It is certainly a Diablo clone, and I mean, it's kind of to be expected considering uh, a large portion of the development staff actually were the original creators of Diablo and Diablo 2. And uh, they had left, I believe, when Blizzard North had shut down and closed their offices. And uh, some of the staff from that went on to make Hellgate London, which uh, I did not play back in the day. Uh, I believe it was subscription based, and that, that was probably what held me off from it. I can't quite recall though. Uh, another portion of the, the game developer staff, however, came and made Torchlight 1 and then later on Torchlight 2. And uh, I think a couple of them went on to make Fate, which is a, another Diablo clone. And was was fairly good in its own right, but I think Torchlight definitely stays closer to the, the original trappings of the genre. Find another secret room? I mean, look at that. But yes, the uh, exploding enemies we, we did decide was probably a little bit too graphic for some of our younger viewers. But there's plenty of other content on the page. Uh, Here's the storm is well while violent isn't particularly gruesome in any respect. Everything is pretty PG as far as the violence there goes. Uh I'm not sure it's the content of Detective Grimoire. It's it's a quirky family friendly little game. Yeah. Civilizations is definitely pretty G rated. And be having some uh Kerbal Space Program videos uploaded at some point. And that's that's definitely a pretty family friendly game as well. Aren't they little aliens? Yeah, they're they're almost reminiscent of uh, minions, sort of. Not, but not yellow. Uh, yes, not not quite as obnoxious. They do have a sort of uh, charm in the way that their spaceships are, are held together with duct tape and and lots of luck. Um, when you said that, it made me think of, uh, Coding Kids Next Door. You remember that little show? Oh, yeah. It was a good Cartoon Network show. Yeah, where they applied everything with... They built everything out of 2x4s. Even called it their 2x4 technology. Yes. And lots of duct tape and found objects. I remember thinking that that was so neat. And wondering if any of those little gadgets were even possible. Is that show even still on? No, I don't believe it's been on for, for quite a while. Well, it goes to show how much I know. But I have to say, some of the, the new shows that Cartoon Network has been coming out with um, have been excellent, like Steven Universe. I am a big Steven fan. Um, because how can you not love Garnet? She's just, she's the epitome of love. She is literally the embodiment of love. And how can you not love that? And I have to say, as much crying as it took and talking him into it, I did get Joa into it. So. It's a fairly good show. Although, uh, I am excited for Samurai Jack to be heading back on the TV. Yes! <laughs> that, that was, that was... It's kind of a shame that, uh, they ruined the Powerpuff Girls reboot. That was, yeah. that was a classic show, and to see them turn it into what they did was pretty disappointing, but... I'd still love to see, like, a return of Dexter's lab, uh, laboratory. That'd, that'd be another good one. I think the... Kind of the failing of the original Powerpuff Girls was really, or um, the first reboot that they tried to do, uh, the one that we don't talk about, with the the really spiky horror line in uh, animation style. Uh, I think people just got so turned off that it was exactly the opposite of what anybody wanted for the Powerpuff Girls. Was low. And then in this new one, it was just so had such so many 
problematic undertones to it in the way that they interacted with some of the characters and the way that they designed some of the characters. Um, obviously, I, I, was a huge, I was a huge fan of the Powerpuff Girls growing up. Uh, Bubbles was my favorite because I'm narcissistic and I like blondes because I'm a blonde. Um, don't question it. <laughs> and, like, there was definitely some problematic things, you know, with, with him being the devil, obviously. Um, being a kind of a gender non-conforming character, or at least one that didn't keep within binaries uh, of representation, but also that parallel between him supposed to be resembling the devil, obviously you can see where that starts to become problematic. Ooh, this is this the secret yeah, wall one. This puzzle is not very fun. I remember you did better at this than I did. Um, yes, so you do what you need to do and you tell me what you need from me. Um, and I will continue talking about Powerful Girls. <laughs> but, and so the new series had those same problematic elements to it um, that existed before. So I think that that kind of really turned people off of it. But I don't know. I, I never, um, I haven't really kept up with, with much of what people have been saying about that series. It's too much. Sorry, just a moment, clearing out the inventory here. Alright, so uh, we're going to actually go ahead and call it at this puzzle here, and we'll pick it up for uh, next week's video. So this is, like I said, episode 3, I believe, yep, episode three. of Torchlight 2. And we are in the Wellspring Temple, second floor. And like I said, we'll pick it up next time on Steel Streams. I'm Jothan. And I'm Gracie. And don't forget to like this video, share, and subscribe. You can find us on all the social media, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that goodness. And we hope to see you next time. Yes, we upload every week, um, about every other day. So be sure to come back, subscribe, so that you can uh, stay up to date on all of our content. And that's about it. Later. <laughs>